show you a couple of things. Oh, let me do this first. It's all about me, bam. And then let me show you in Canvas a couple of things. Let's see. Sorry, you're probably getting that song stuck in your head too. Huh? Um, what am I doing? Uh, so if you go to modules, uh, one thing real quick, I don't know if you guys have noticed this. So I had my office hours yesterday. Tomorrow, they've rescheduled a meeting that was supposed to happen today and then rescheduled it to tomorrow. I think, did I send an email out about that? I can't remember. Oh, I did, good. All right, so just to make sure if you want to come to office hours tomorrow, I had to push them back to five to six. I don't know if that's good for anybody, but that's basically the only time that's good for me. So, I mean, that's the only time I could do it. Um, what else did I want to show you? I have no idea. Oh, yeah. If you go to unit seven, it now exists. And there's a worksheet that we're going to do today. I put the answers from the uh, worksheet we did. Um, up here if you want to, because somebody wanted those. So it's up there for everybody. All my scribble from that box plot and stuff worksheet, right? All the writing over KB. And, and come on, hello. There we go, come on, you can do it. I updated the homework sheet this morning and I decided to make both of these sections extra credit. So you guys all with, is everybody, anybody having trouble understanding? You guys with me this morning? You guys out there? Is anybody out there? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, all right. And quiz five is still today. It's on chapter five. Um, so let me make sure everybody understands what's happening. Eight and 11 are now extra credit. So I can discuss them if you ask specific questions. I might talk a little bit about some of it, but not, not, not for a full lecture. Um, uh, what else did I wanna say? Um, tomorrow is, not, it is just review for the final. I have not had time to put together a complete practice final. So I figured what would probably be best is I'm gonna have it put together hopefully later today. I'll put it up on Canvas and then tomorrow we can reference it and do problems from it and so forth. And you could do problems from quizzes or homework to, to review for the finals. Everybody understanding that? Anybody not understanding what I just said? Can you say that one more time? Yes, so tomorrow will be only review for the final. Today is the last day of new material. I will have a practice final that we can work on together during class tomorrow. Um, I doubt anybody would have had much time to look at it on your own anyway, because your main priority is homework. So um, we'll do that. That'll be in class tomorrow to help us have examples to try out uh, in a more organized format. Um, uh, I think that's all I said, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, notice that the final exam starts at 9.30. Class still starts at nine on Thursday, but I'm gonna devote that first half hour to questions or whatever. I still am gonna have office hours at 8 a.m. as always. Um, so starting at 9.30, that's when the final starts. You'll have until 11.45 to finish it and turn it in. Uh, and of course, as has been stated many times, uh, you will have to have a camera on while you're taking the final. Crazy. Okay, any questions about any of that? Oh, I got a chat that won't open. Chat. Let me stop sharing. There it is. Oh, quiz corrections. Uh, can somebody tell me where do you turn in quiz corrections? 
many of you have already, and many of them have been graded by me, so somebody knows. Where, where do you turn in quiz corrections? Anybody, please. In the same place you submitted the quiz? Yes. So you just do the corrections and you turn it in right on top of your old quiz. Same, so if you do quiz three corrections, you turn it in where it says submit quiz three. Do you freak out if it says you're it's late? No, because it's late due to, compared to the date that quiz three was due. Are you with me? So don't, uh, it doesn't matter. Quiz corrections can't be late unless you turn it in after the final, then it's late. Alejandro, no. Just like quizzes in, in the midterm, and you do not have to print out the final. You can if you want to. You can leave your friends behind because if your friends don't dance. Oh, sorry. Nobody? No. All right. That was for me. On top of the other work. I like it. Thank you, Caitlin. Okay. Anything else? Thank you, Martine, for that. See, Martine's smart. She's like, that was not a funny joke, but I better laugh because just to keep this guy going. There we go, see somebody else is humoring me. All right, anything else guys, before we just jump right back in, any questions from homework? I've graded all the chapter five stuff that was turned in. So if you turn in chapter five stuff, it's it's the, I've looked at it, you can go look at that. The quizzes, again, the, the quizzes today on chapter five, Okay, and if you just logged in, you should go look at all the changes in Canvas, right? Updated the homework sheet. Uh, anyway, anyway, okay. So if there's no questions, if there's no questions, which makes me a little concerned, but that's all right. I'm just gonna get right back in to where we left off. Okay, so let's see. Bum, bum, ba, da, bum, ba, ba, da. I think, get out of there. Uh, oh yeah, I need that for later. So I think we we still have section 6C. Oh yeah, we still need to do 6B, that's right. Okay, we need to finish up 6B. Did I, oh, all right, I should have done that. That was not smart. Well, uh, I have a handout that's a little more technical than it has to be for what we're doing. So I don't think I'm gonna put that up there. Um, but let's remember what we did. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which, um, does, does anybody remember the main thing we did at the end of class yesterday? What was it that we created? a formula to find. Does anyone remember? That was so one day ago, Jeff. Any, anybody remember what we did yesterday at the end of class? You're talking about the box plot or after? What is the little thing? Yeah, after that. Spread formula, remember that? So it's actually called standard deviation. Yeah. That's what we officially call the spread. The standard deviation is a number that basically tells you how spread out the data is. It technically tells you the average distance from the mean to all the data points. Now, I'm slowly coming back to me what I promised I would do. So I promised I would explain why you divide by one less than the number. Okay, so. This is easier to do in a classroom, but let's try this out. If, let's stay with me. And it would be better if there were more people in this class. So let's pretend like we're in a group of, screw it, this is fine. Let's just use what we got. There's an average age of everybody in this Zoom meeting right now. Do you agree with me? 
Of course you do. There is one. There just is an average age. If I took a random sample of people, would those people's ages be closer to the overall average or would they be closer to their average? This is a weird question, maybe. If I took a sample of people, would their ages be closer to their average age or would their ages be closer to the overall average age? Their average age? Of, yeah, think about it. Of course it would be closer because the average, if I calculate it for them, it kind of finds the middle of the data. It, it's going to be closer to all of them. So if I want to show you an extreme example, Let's say I have a 17, 19, 21, and a 40 year old, right? You with me? Somebody, real quick, tell me what the average of that is. Why did I have to pick those numbers? I think it's 24.25. Sounds right, but I don't know. Somebody help me. Yep. You're right, 24.25. Look at that shit. This is good coffee, man. All right. 24.25 is the overall average. This is the population mean. Now, what if I took a sample? Is it possible I could get these three people in a sample? Is that possible? Yes. All right. Let me just answer my own question. Yes. What is the average of those three people? What does the sample mean? Part of the total population. Say what? What exactly is the sample mean? A part of the total population. No, 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 no. Here's the sample. What is the mean of this sample? What's the mean of this number? 19. 19, okay. This is kind of an extreme example, but it, this basically captures the idea. Are the, is my sample, are these people, are their ages closer to the overall average or closer to their average? Are their ages closer to the overall average or closer to their own average? Of course. Now, if I did it with a real uh, population, it wouldn't be this extreme, but it would still be true. What does that have to do with anything, Jeff? I forgot. No, I'm joking. Okay, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. Stay with me. What does this measure? Distance from the mean. So if I calculate a sample standard deviation that will always be smaller than the population standard deviation because they are closer to their own average. I know, I know. Do you really have to understand that to be able to do any work? No. But several of you wanted to know, and I, I'm, I was gonna tell you anyway, this is a little technical, but do you understand the connection? They are closer to their own average. Standard deviation measures distance <laughs> from the average. Go ahead. Sorry. Yes? Alejandra, what's up? Do you have a question? No, OK. I'm going to. Uh yeah, I, I was just give standard deviation. If standard deviation measures the distance to what? To the mean, uh, from, the, from the mean to the data points. So it measures the distance from the mean to all the data points. Can you hear me? I can hear you, can you hear me? What's happening? Can you hear me? Oh, help, help. Yeah. Yes. 
So yeah. uh, it's just my internet is really bad right now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I understand. Believe me. Uh, so um, standard deviation measures average distance from the mean to all the data points. So now listen, listen, if, if I always get, uh, I don't say this, a smaller standard deviation than what it should be. Do you agree with me? If I calculate standard deviation the same way I calculate this population standard deviation, I'll get a smaller one for every sample. So what do I do then if, if I, all right, stay, stay, this is the last thing I'm going to say. If I add up all the um, x's minus the means divided by n, that's going to be too small because every sample is closer to their own mean. So how do I adjust that then? To make a fraction bigger, I make the denominator smaller. If I divide by less, doesn't the answer become bigger? All right. If that's unsatisfactory, I'm sorry, but that is why we divide by a smaller denominator. One less. Why is it exactly n minus one? Okay. Let me explain that a little bit. Stay with me. Let me do two things here. I'm going to go turn off my ace, my heater. All right. And then I'm going to recess. Does everybody understand right now that if you don't really get this part we're talking about right now, it doesn't change your ability to do the work. Right. But I really appreciate that some of you guys want to know. Why the shit is it that? Why do we divide by one less, Jeff? I understand that's beautiful. I really want everybody to be like, why the shit is that? Here, so far, I've, I've, I hope I've proven to you that for a sample, we do have to adjust it. We have to make it bigger because it's always going to be smaller than it should be. Now, what is n minus one? What's the significance of this? Now, stay with me. <laughs> I see that so much. Here's an example. Um, you can do it, Jeff. Oh, can you tell me if I have three, stay with, this is cool by itself. This example is cool by itself. If I have three numbers that average to be 10, do you know anything about any of the numbers? Do any of them have to be 10 or do any of them have to be eight? Or do they all have to be positive? Can any of them be a decimal? I mean, do, think about it. If they average to be 10, do you know anything about any individual number? Well, hell no. How many numbers average to be 10? Infinite, right? So now watch, this is really neat. Stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. I don't know anything about any of the individual numbers, but what must they all add up to be? What's the only way to get an average of 10 from three numbers? What do you divide by three to get 10? You can do it. How do I find the average? I add them all up and divide by three in this case. So if I'm telling you that the average, the mean is 10, we know that's true. What must they all add up to be? Hey. Oh, oh, good, I'm sorry. 30. Somebody should say, look at the chat. <laughs> all right, 30, I love it, I love it. Do you, do you guys, so as long as they add up to be 30, it's good. So can I just make up the first one, totally make it up? Yes, let me say 18, just make it up. Somebody give me a number for the second one. Anything you want? 40. 40, kick ass. Now, 
can we just make the last one anything we want and have it come out to be this? No. No. What do I have so far? What does this add up to be? Fifty-eight. Fifty-eight. So, what's the last one have to be so that it adds up to be thirty? Remember, this could be temperatures up in Alaska, so it ne negatives are allowed. I got fifty-eight. What does this have to be so they add up to be thirty? Fifty-eight. Negative twenty-eight. Negative twenty-eight. If you don't believe me, add these up. Divide by three. So now watch, here's the point. How many total numbers did I have here? I had, I had three. How many of them could I just make up without any concern? Two. N minus one. That would, I really want you guys. So that is the significance of N minus one. Now is, I really want you, so it doesn't matter how long the list I make. I could just make up all of them until I get to the last one. The last one is the one that's gotta be like, all right guys, let me fix this mess. Does that make sense by itself? Now, I need you to understand that even if I was teaching a pure stats class, we would go a little bit deeper into this and it would take a while though, but I haven't made the connection fully because this isn't really a stats class. But I've shown you the significance of n minus 1 by itself, and I've shown you that standard deviation has to be adjusted for a sample. Those two do go together somehow. Because what is it that I don't know when I do have a sample, I don't know the population mean. There's one thing I don't know, which is the population mean. So that's where the n minus 1 kind of comes in. That's where it comes into play with this idea. Okay, enough of that because none of what I've said so far is necessary to be able to do the work. Okay. So let's try an example. I think last time we did one, three, 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 five, right? And our standard deviation came out to be 1.414. You guys remember that? I did it right at the end. I, I, that's when I brought up the N minus one thing and everybody went, what the shit, what the shit. So now you can still say what the shit, but at least I have explained it. <laughs> um, so what if we do uh, this one? One, two, three, four, five. Remember that was the other data set? And remember, we said that this spread should be how related to this spread. Which one's more spread out? One, two, three, four, five, or one, three, 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 five? One, two, three, four, five. This one, one, two, three, four, five is more spread out. So its standard deviation should be bigger because that's what it measures. So let's see, how do we do this shit? Well, these are my variable uh, values. I need to first do them minus the mean, all right? Because the fundamental idea of standard deviation is how far is every data point from the mean. So it makes sense that this happens. How far away is each one from the mean? That makes sense. So this would be 1 minus 3, negative 2. 2 minus 3, negative 1. 3 minus 3, 4 minus 3, 5 minus 3. And remember, no matter what these numbers are, this would always add up to be zero, which is why I can't use it. We discussed absolute value is one way to kill the negatives, but a slightly better mathematical way is to square, which is why we have the square root at the end. Okay, let me stop for a minute. This is why I made a big point yesterday about if I want to know the average heights of men in this class, what do I have to do first? Get a list of average heights. All right. If I want to know the average distance from the mean to the data points, what do I have to do first? Get a list of distances. Now we go, oh shit, it's not quite right. Let me, let me square things and then I'll square root. So I, I'm still fundamentally capturing the same idea. 
Okay. So now I square everything. So four, one, zero, one, four. What always kills me is when people do this and there are negatives here. Why can that not happen? Why can there be no negatives in this column? Anybody? Anybody? Is it because it's squared? <clears throat> What's the only, does anyone know the, so any real number times itself is positive or zero because two negatives make a positive. Now, real quick, why if you put in your calculator, if you put this in your calculator, it will tell you negative four. Does that mean all of math is wrong? Does that mean whatever? I've had people actually do this and say, you're wrong, Jeff, you're wrong. You think you know math, math boy, but you're wrong. And I say, no, because I do know math. And, and this is order operations. Do I multiply by a negative first or do I square first? Of course I square first. Please excuse my dumbass son or dear Aunt Sally, <laughs> right? So that's two squared with a negative in front of it. So if you want to square negative two, you have to tell the dumb calculator that you want to square negative two. Is that okay? Has anybody run into that before? No, okay. Okay, all right. So now, to find the mean of these, I add them up and divide by how many there are, but I adjust for the fact that this is a sample. So it would be, add these up, I get 10, divided by five minus one, one less. You can think of the little s as spread, but it's technically standard deviation. So here I get 2.5. And what do you get when you take the square root of 2.5, anybody? One point five eight one one three. I like it. So just like we predicted, the spread of this data is bigger than the spread of this data, but we knew that by looking. We just don't know we didn't know specifically what it was. Let me give you a set of data to try on your own. Somebody remind me, why did I subtract three on this step? Because three was the mean? Yes. So if they give you different data, are you going to subtract three necessarily? No. You got to first figure out what the hell the mean is, right? Okay. So keep that in mind. Is everybody ready for me to erase this? I'm gonna give you a set of data to try on your own. Okay, here we go. All right, let me not make it too freaky here. Uh, yeah, I can make a nice small little set. Of, so this is a sample. Um, uh, what you got, Jeff? You make it come out not too bad. Sure, that'll be fine. Okay. So again, just to remind everybody, the first step is to figure out what the mean is. 
while you do that, I'm gonna go here. So I missed that. Where'd you get the five? Oh, oh, that's not a five. That's that's an S. Is that better? I don't know. Do, 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 do. This is the S that stands for standard deviation. That's that's all. That's right. This will be the. Oh, somebody's giving me the answer already. Hold on. So this will be the. Uh, add up these and then divide by n minus one. That's the formula for this, the square distances, right? So what'd you guys get? Anybody get the mean of these yet? Yes. What is it? 10. 10, I love it. They add up to be 40. And there's four of them, so the mean is 10. That's beautiful. So now you do seven minus 10, 10 minus 10, 11 minus 10, 12 minus 10. What do these add up to be? What do these add zero. up to? Zero. It always adds to zero, which is why we always square them. Otherwise, every time we do this, S would be zero. What good is that, right? I really, does everybody understand that? Okay. So now to kill the negatives, we square each of these, which is why at the end, we take a square root. So now I get negative three squared is nine, zero, one, four. When you add these up, you get 14. So then you would be 14 divided by, what's N? What's the number? It's four total, so you'd be divided by three. Good. So S squared is? When you do this, you get the average square distance. And then the last thing I want to do is take a square root, of course, because I want to do the average distance. Wait, why is it 14 over three though? Wait, like, I think I'm like, my brain is like missing a step. Like when you put it into the formula there. So what, is, what do you get when you add up these? 14. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, and, then, and then it's divided by one less than how many there are. Uh, I see, I see. Okay, thank you. Cool. So the square root of 4.66, is that where you got the 2.167 from, Nikki? I like it. So on average, every data point is about 2.167 away from the, the mean. Okay, all right. Now, a really good next question. 
So it doesn't make sense that if, uh, for example, if I wanted to find uh, somebody to cut uh, pieces of lumber for me, cut some wood for me, and one company uh, cuts them to an average length of, you know, whatever, 40 inches or whatever I need, but their standard deviation is one inch. And then another company, average of 40, but their standard deviation is 0.2 inches. Which one am I going to use? Point two. Yeah, the one that's more precise, the one that has less variation, right? Now, some of you guys are probably in the trade and you're like, both of those tolerances suck, Jeff, but that I'm just trying to make a point here, <laughs> right? All right. All right, so that's one of the most basic uses of standard deviation is to get an accurate feel for how varied the data is. And sometimes the higher the variation, the worse. In that case, you don't want a lot of variation or else your house is gonna look kind of weird, right? Okay. All right. So the last section in chapter six, discusses some uses of standard deviation and they go into what's called the normal distribution. I think I've brought this up before, maybe. Does anyone know what the normal curve or distribution is? Is there another name you know it by? Does somebody else know it by a different name? I don't know which one to use better. No, nobody knows. Does anyone know what it looks like? My shirt yesterday gave it away. I don't know if you guys remember. I think, don't I have the dinosaur on the homework sheet too? The normal curve is No, or is that on my other class? Yeah. Um, so normal curve, its other name is the bell curve. That's the kind of more uh, name that is more known by. So um, have you ever heard of an instructor curving grades? You ever heard of that expression? Have you ever had instructors curve grades for you? So basically what they're doing when they're curving grades is they assign what the middle is. So if the highest grade was a 40, I can say, okay, 40 is A, and then somewhere the B start, and then somewhere the C's, and then somewhere the D's, and so forth on this new curve. So it doesn't go up to 100. I just kind of pick the bell up and move it back. When I curve grades, I actually change the shape of the thing too. But, you know, that's just because I'm weird. Um, okay. All right. The bell curve has a lot of negative connotations because any useful tool can be misused. And unfortunately, the bell curve has been misused a lot. People try to force things to be a bell curve when they don't have to be, when they're not supposed to be. You guys with me out there? So if everybody made an A on a quiz, there might be an instructor that says, well, actually then a 92 is an F and a 95 is a D. And a I mean, that's holy shit. Maybe just everybody understood what the hell you were doing. You don't have to force a bell curve into that thing, right? Okay, maybe, 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 maybe. So how does this thing apply here? How does, how does the standard deviation work here? So if I had a normal curve that looked like uh, this versus one that looks like this, Obviously, which one has a bigger standard deviation? Let's say this is S1 and this is S2. Which one has a bigger standard deviation? S2. S2, because it's more spread out. But here's the cool thing. Here's the awesome thing about the normal curve. So watch this. Whatever this mean is, let's just give it a number just so we get the idea. So let's say this mean is 10 and this mean is 10. Let's say that this standard deviation is two and this one is 
uh, phi. Are you guys roughly with me so far? So like you said, this one should be bigger. So I'm just picking some numbers just to make this a little more concrete. So here's the really, really cool thing. If I go one step up on both of these and one step down, is everybody cool with where these numbers are coming from? What would go here? If they go one step down. Eight. Be, I'm sorry, go ahead. Eight. Eight, because each step is too big. Let me stop for a minute. We're, we're doing some neat technical stuff now. So anybody got, what would this number be here? Five. Five. The really cool thing is if it's a normal curve, no matter how skinny or fat, if I go one step up and one step down, that's plus one S and minus one S. Is that, do you guys understand? No matter what, how skinny or fat it is, I'm gonna catch 68% of the data in there. That is a consequence of it being exactly normal. So for example, let me give you an even more concrete, well, let me finish this out and then I'll give you an even more concrete example. So if I go up one more and down one more, This is getting a little weird down here, but these are maybe temperatures somewhere. You guys, so we're gonna go negative here in a minute. If I go up and down one more, in between these is 95% of the data. So one step up and down is 68%, two steps is 95%. And then if I go three steps, three steps, give me three steps. If I go three steps, that'll be 99.7% of everything is between those. So this is just to illustrate that no matter how it's shaped, and what's funny is, I mean, I, I really, uh, well, this is fine. <laughs> because standard deviation measures how much it's spread out. So if it's more spread out, the standard deviation gets bigger, so it still catches the same amount. So every step here is smaller than it is here because this is more spread out. All right, maybe you guys are with me, maybe. So let me give you an, the ultimate concrete example. Let me put it over here. Heights of men in the US, All right? Heights of men, sounds like a very boring movie. The heights of men in the U.S., last I checked, have an average of 69 inches and a standard deviation of 2.8 inches. Now, things might have changed. I don't know, but that's what it has been for a little while. Why do I say U.S.? Because, for example, heights of men in uh, other countries could be taller or shorter. On average, right? So we're going to focus on the U.S. So now watch this. This is kind of cool. Can you guys build up this step thing we just did? Can you guys um, go up one, two, three steps and go down one, two, three steps? What would those be? Let me give myself some more room here. It's a little bit better, I guess. Can you uh, go ahead and do it? Let's see if you get it. 
The numbers are a little bit more gross here, but just because they're real numbers. Um, So for example, what would this be here? 71.8. Yeah, so if I take one step and each step is this big, up 71.8. Let me take the units out of there, there we go. And I'll just keep going. So I'm gonna put underneath here, I'm gonna put a zero underneath here and a one underneath there. Is that, we'll talk about the shit that means. Try to fill in these numbers. You know, you can use a calculator. It's not a, can you subtract freaky decimals problem? This is just con concept, right? So if you keep going up, this should be, what do you get here? Seventy-four point six. Seventy-four point six, because I added two steps. That's two steps up, and then one more step. Seventy-seven point four. And that's three steps up, and now one step down. So remarkably enough, I'm going to put a negative one there. It's one step down. Sixty-six point two. Good, and then another step down. Sixty-three point four. And then get you know, another step down. 60.4. 60, what, what? 60.4. No. 60.6, right? Oh, right, yeah. Okay. Now, what percentage of men, U.S. men, not us men, <laughs> What percentage of U.S. men are between uh, 63.4 and 74.6 inches tall? Ninety-five. Percent. Yes, it's within two. It's within two steps. So two steps up and down catches ninety-five percent of the data. So what percentage of men? Let's see who gets this. This is a little more complicated question. What percentage of men are taller than seventy-four point six inches? So this was um ninety-five percent. What percentage? are taller than 74.6 inches. So up here. I love this question. Is it 2.35%? No. Nope. You're overthinking it. Or underthinking it or something. I don't know. I understand where you got that number from. But now watch this. If there's 95% in here, how much is outside of there? 5%. So how much is on that side? 5%. 2.5%. 2 I really want you to understand. Isn't there 5% total outside? So since this is symmetric, wouldn't there be 2.5%? So if you made a door that was 74.6 inches tall, 5% of men would have to duck you have a 5% chance of somebody complaining because they hit their head, right? They're like, all right, guys, see you later. <laughs> right? So that's why doors, we actually measured the door in our classroom one time, and I think it came out to be 76 point something inches tall. So they just, that's, so how wide are airplane seats? They are a certain width so that only a certain percentage of people will complain about the width of the seat, right? Well, we can all complain, but will actually fit, I guess. Do you understand? So they take the average uh, uh, hip width or size of our butts, and then they 
kind of work with the standard deviation and they figure out uh, how much is going to be bad for PR. Do you guys, do you guys, are you guys with me? Something else about airplanes. Has anybody ever, remember the days when you could safely go on an airplane? Well, no, actually you might not. I mean, I remember the day when I could bring my own bottle of water on with me in the airplane and my friend could be at the gate. But that's back when America had no idea what the shit was going on. We we're stupid. But has anybody ever been bumped from a flight or taken the offer of whatever money or whatever to give their seat up or something? Anybody? Never? Have you heard of this happening? Yeah. Yes. Why does that happen? Because they overbook. Why do they overbook, jackasses? Why do they do that? Because the probability is somebody's probably going to miss the flight. There you go. So they they have people that analyze data and they can figure out how many should we overbook that will still keep us within a good amount so our PR doesn't go too bad, so that our public image is not too tarnished, right? So they overbook. Why? Because they're going to fly the plane. They want butts in every seat or else they're not making as much money as they could. So they're going to put over butts, <laughs> over butts. I love it. So like my old college sold, uh, probably this one does too. I have no idea. But the old one, I know it was two and a half um, parking permits for every parking spot they had. Yeah. So certain times a day, there were literally no spots to be had. So too bad, student. All right. Of course, it was, uh, us faculty had a spot, man. Uh, so, um, uh, let me see. I think, okay, that's pretty good. Look at all this beautiful stuff. Oh, man, this is so beautiful. Was that hard to do? If I tell you the average and the standard deviation, was this difficult to create? No. This you got to memorize. 68. 95, 99.7. So can somebody tell me, what if they made a door 77.4 inches tall, what percentage of men would have to duck then? What percentage of men are taller than 77? Well, what percentage are in three steps? 99.7. Are you guys... It's the same work we just did. So if 99.7 is in here, what percentage is out of there? 0. 0.3. 3. So what percentage is up there? 0. 0.15. And those people you could live with because those people are probably used to doing a lot of things because they're so damn tall, right? They're probably not going to complain. They're going to be like, that's me. I'm tall as shit. So that's why the doors, I think, are around this tall, somewhere here, around that tall, because they control for the number of complaints they're going to get, right? Okay, maybe. So if we were all like hobbit level, then we'd all have hobbit-sized doors in houses and stuff, but we're not hobbits, right? Our feet aren't that hairy. Okay. So, Professor. Yes. Within two steps is 80 68%. Within one step, let me write this down. Everybody got this here? This crazy shit? Okay, I'm gonna erase this. Let me write it down a little bit more concisely for you. For a normal curve, well, that's what this says. For a normal curve, within one standard deviation, so that within means up and down one. You can find 68% of the data within two steps, two standard deviations, 95%. And within three standard deviations is basically all of them, 99.7%. I like it. Heights are known to be normally distributed. Most like biological things like height and length of fish and stuff like that are normally distributed which is sort of like where the word normal comes from. Is that okay? Is that better? So that's what you must memorize, right? Those three percentages. Now, to be honest, 
there's a whole table of values and you can calculate what if I was uh, 1.7 standard deviations away? Well, there's a, there's a formula for that, but we're not gonna get that deep into this, thankfully, right? Okay, the formula actually comes from calculus. So let's not go there. Let's just stick with this, the, the main three. Okay, what time we got? This is a good time for us. Yeah, let's take a break. Why not? That's a decent chunk we've done. Let's come back, what time is it? Uh, yeah, let's come back at, uh, uh, let's do quarter past 10, 10, 15. Nancy, log in time, we're taking a break. Okay, I, I got cut off. They're doing maintenance. Cox is doing maintenance in my area. Of course they are. Oh my I, gosh, I, I'm so mad I missed all that. Oh. I was recording. Oh my gosh. Yeah, uh, I figured something like it, because I, I think I heard, yeah, there were issues in areas. All right, everybody. Is everybody back? Hello. Uh, let's see. Okay. So we we just, uh, oh, there's somebody. Okay, that freaked me out. <laughs> Both my monitors went blank, so I thought, there went Zoom. Um, we just finished chapter six, right? That, that, that last thing we did was the end of chapter six. So we're going to get into chapter seven. And that's the last thing we're going to do. That's the last new information is the two sections in chapter seven. So we're about to do the absolute last new material uh, for this course. Um, just to remind everybody, tomorrow uh, we'll be devoted to review for the final. And then the final exam happens on Thursday. Okay. Let me come here. Yeah. Okay. Let me ask you guys, this is going to look very familiar. Um, this first thing we're going to do. Let's say somebody uh, tosses a coin, tosses a fair coin, right? They flip a coin, the coin is fair, it's not been weighted. Um, they do it twice, let's say, they do it twice. So what could happen then? This is gonna look a lot like something we've done before. So for example, so if I flip a coin twice, what could happen? I could get tails and then tails. What else can happen? Oh, holy shit. But instead of F for the logic table we did before, the truth tables, I'm of course gonna use H or heads or tails heads or heads tails or heads heads. If it's a fair coin, it's not weighted. Are any of those four situations more or less likely than the others? No. No. So the basic idea of probability is if you know the total number of things that could happen and they're all equally likely, you can answer any question about the probability of any situation. So what's the probability that I would get two tails? Well, how many times does that happen? Once. Once out of how many total things that could have happened? Four. Yeah. All right. So 25%, you'll make it 25% chance that you get, that you flip a tails and then a tails. I like it. I like it. Okay. Nothing too major yet. They could also do like, if you have two kids, does anyone know what's kind of a little bit wrong with talking about having a boy versus a girl? Anybody? Are the probabilities equal? Do you guys know? Is the probability of having a boy versus probably having a girl, are they equal? Doesn't genetics have stuff to do with it too? Oh, well, somewhat, but 
the probabilities of having a boy versus having a girl are not equal to each other. They're not both 50%. I think it used to be more boys, but I think recently it's been more girls. I can't remember, I haven't looked at it in a while, but it's not 50-50 exactly, but it's close enough. So the book could ask you questions about boy, 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 girl, girl, boy, girl, girl, and you still assume they're all equally likely. Okay, I like it. It's sort of like the coin that talks about gender of your baby is not uh, fairly weighted. Okay, I like it, I like it. And to be honest, questions like that are not really sensitive to everybody's personal designation. So I kind of try to stay away from those gender specific questions. All right, so that's one thing. This, I don't think they call this what it is. This is called a sample space. It lists all the possible things that could happen. So it's called a sample space. It's kind of neat. Sorry, it's not final space, sorry. Okay, so let's take it a step back. I, I want to talk about this because this is one of the first things the book talks about. So I wanted to get this out there. Now. Am I, am I recording, by the way? Did I remember? It? Yes. Now, let me talk about just probabilities, the, the, uh, the fundamental idea of probabilities. We basically just used it. But no matter what kind of probability you are discussing, it always goes back to this, which is why it's called the fundamental idea of probability. Does it say this anywhere in the book? No, it's my own wording. So here's the fundamental idea. Um, if I know the total number of things that could happen, let's call that N, does that make sense? N will be the number of things that could happen. Like N for a deck of cards, if I was gonna pull a card out of a normal deck of cards, N would be 52, because there are 52 different cards that could be picked. And let's say that X is the number of things that match what I'm looking for. So if I wanted to know the probability that I pick a king out of a normal deck of cards, if I randomly pick a card, 52 cards, that's in. How many kings? Do you guys know how many kings in a deck of cards? Four, four right? Four for each of the, the four things, the lucky charms, right? So the probability that I would get a king would be four chances out of 52 things. The most basic mistake that people make with that kind of question is somebody will tell me the probability of a king is one out of four. Can somebody understand the reasoning that that person is employing? Which so is, it's one type of king out of four possible kings? That's right. So that's assuming that I've only got kings in my hand. And then I'm asking what's probably get a king of hearts. That would be where the answer is one out of four. There's no way the probability of king is 25%. That's saying that the kings make up 25% of the deck and they don't. So it's always, probability is always the number of things that match what you're looking for divided by the total number of things. Is it always that easy to identify what those are? No, I can give you some weird ass situations, but it always breaks down to that idea. So the probability is always X over N. All right. And again, is it always this easy to calculate those? No, you've got to work with the situation. What do I, what do I mean? Okay, here we go. Here we go. I'm going to set up a situation and we're going to analyze the hell out of it. All right. Let me, I'm going to erase all this. Okay. 
So let's say that I ask a group of people a question, right? Um, so let's say that in this group, um, I'm just gonna call them older people and younger people. And I ask them a question and the answer could be yes, no, maybe. Oh, Jeff, you could do better than this. This is shit, but oh well, we'll be fine. So everybody go with this. This is, this is the official name of what I'm creating is a contingency table. And, and that sounds way too technical for, for this. This is pretty straightforward. Why is my lighting all weird? It's because of me. I see. I got my dark shirt on. All right. Um, so so I'm just going to throw some numbers in here. Here we go. 11, 2, uh, 4, 3, 15, 1. What does that one, what does that one represent? Like the column that it's in or? I, yeah, who is this one person? Who is that person? A younger person who said, who answered maybe. Is that better? That's a little bit better. A younger person who said maybe. Do you guys, is everybody cool with that? Maybe, no, all right. Is the lighting better? I don't know. It was it just me confused about the lighting. Um, that sucks for me though, I can't see shit. All right, so now watch this. I'm gonna add up these and I'm gonna add up these. Let me see if I can do it right. Good job, Jeff. What does that 17 represent? The total number of people who said no. Exactly. So everybody, so I want to start there because I always have somebody that's not quite able to read this thing correctly. Okay. I like it. And how many total people did I talk to? 36. Yes. Don't put 72. So if you add these and get 36, you're going to add these and get 36. Those are the same people, aren't they? These people are these people. Does everybody get that idea? Same people, I'm just identify them in different ways. So don't add 36 to 36. That's bad, okay? Drugs are bad, so now I'm going to ask you a very basic probability question. So if I pick, let me let me set up the situation. If I pick one person at random from this group, what is the probability that I pick an older person? How would you set up that ratio? Eleven out of thirty-six. Yes. Yeah, so the bottom will always be. Ooh, look at that one. That's not bad. You can almost tell it's blue. The bottom will always be the total number of things that could happen. So it could have been any of the thirty-six people. And the, now, be careful. I said yes before I looked. What What's wrong with? You said eleven out of thirty-six, right? That's, that's not quite right. Be 17 out of 36. Right? 17. How many match what I'm looking for? 17 match what I'm looking for. Okay, I like it. All right. What's the probability that I pick somebody who says, who said yes? That'd be 14 out of 36. Yeah, 14 people said yes out of 36 that I could have chosen. Real quick, go back up here. Change this into a, 
a percent for me. What is 17 divided by 36? 47.22 repeating percent. 47.3? 22. 22? Repeating. repeating. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. And then 14 out of 36. Is that point three eight? 38.88. All right. Roughly. Okay, nothing major yet, right? That's pretty straightforward. So the basic idea of probability, the bottom is everything it could have been. The top is everything that matches what you're looking for because you have, for example, 17 chances to get somebody who's older out of 36 total people. Okay, so that ratio makes sense. So in this problem, this is the work. And then this is the answer, right? So if you just put these down, you're not showing me work. Because some of you guys still don't quite understand what it means to show me work. Okay. Let me give you a different one. What's the probability that I pick uh, somebody who said no and they are younger? Oh, we've talked about and before. Right, but now this is Three? Is it? Oh, no. You said no? No and younger, yes. So you're almost right. I know what you did. 15. Is it 15? 15? Now, careful. Tell me, what's the biggest the answer to a probability question can be? A hundred percent. hundred percent or one as a number, right? As a decimal. hundred percent is the same thing as one. Is everybody with me? So if your answer is 15, that's, you made a mistake. What did you forget? So there are 15 people that match what I'm looking for divided by 36. 36. Does that make sense? The top is how many match what you're looking for out of the total number of things that could have happened. I like it. Hey, Mikey. I'm trying to remember, did I put something? No, I didn't make a thingamajig. No, okay, that's good. <coughs> All right, and then, and then whatever the hell that is as a, as a percent. I don't even know. Five out of 12, so it's going to be 41.5. Uh, I don't know. Is that about right? 41.6. 41.6. I'm sorry. I'll I'll retire after this class. I've done a disservice. Math boy. All right. So now, has everybody got these answers? All right. I gotta erase it so I can make some more room. I want to start doing a little bit freakier shit now. <laughs> Tiny bit. So everybody see now this is really cool. Do you guys remember and when it came up before? The truth tables. And versus or. Yes, and and required both to be true. Remember this? So and, now watch this. And is also called intersection. What is the intersection of no and younger? That's where the 15 came from. Do you see that? Now, did we need a formula for and to figure that out? No, because anytime you have everything to, that you can count, you actually don't need formulas because it all comes back to the, the probability idea, right? What matches what you're looking for divided by the total things that could happen. So I don't need formulas for these things. I just have to figure out those two things and I'm done. So what about this? All right, I'm going to erase this. Here we go. What's the probability that I pick, uh, that I, the person I pick uh, is, they, they said maybe, or they are older. Or. Or, yes. Or over 36. No, you did and. You just answered as if I said and. I didn't say and, I said or. And, remember, 
and is restrictive. It's the mean bouncer. The number is always going to be smaller or allows more people in, right? Does that, so I'm not only counting the maybes, I'm also counting the older. I'm counting all of them. And says you have to be a person that is both. Or says you could be this person or that person, and I'll count you. So would it be nine over 36? All right, let's take a look. Maybe is five. How did you get nine? Oh, because I because I also yeah, okay, I see what I did. I counted the four and and ah. the older maybe as well, not the total of uh, older people. So let me show you something. I'm gonna make a mistake right now. So there's five people that said maybe, right? There's 17 people that are older, right? In this group, but I've made a mistake, right? And of course the bottom is gonna be 36, but that is not right. What have I done wrong? Can anybody tell? If I take these people and these people. You counted some twice. Which ones exactly? No, I'm still figuring that out. <laughs> the older maybes. Yeah, the older maybes. I love it. Oh, that sounds like a great band name. Well, maybe a middling band name, like a decent band name. We're the older maybes. No, it sounds terrible. I'll take that back. All right. Um, so look what I, if I do this silly thing, I really want you guys to understand. If I count these people, these people, I have given those people two votes. That's not fair. So what, what I have to subtract them off? Yes? No? Yes. If I subtract them off, then I've only counted them once. Now, the smarter way to do this is there's 17 older people. How many maybes have I not counted yet? One. So then that's 18. But what is 5 plus 17 minus 4? It's 18 still. Look at that. That's a nice one. I don't need any help with that one. Yay, Jeff. So here's our first official formula for probabilities. Did we need a formula to do this? Did I do this with a formula? No, not really. I just used the idea, didn't I? That's the funny thing about probabilities. And this is such a weird thing to hear from a math teacher. But the formulas get in your way if I give you everything you can use to count. Because probability is all about counting. So if I have all the information I need to count, I don't need formulas. I can just put it together like we just did. But here's the formula for other situations, right? So watch, here's the formula for or. What was five out of 36? Wasn't that the probability of maybe? Right, five out of 36 is the probability yeah. of maybe. So this is the probability of one of these things plus the probability of the other thing. Yeah, there we go. Minus, now what the shit was this? What does that represent the four out of 36? What, what's, the, what, what, what's that? The four. Subtracting the four maybe is from the total. But be careful. Who are these people exactly? They are people that said maybe. The extra maybe. True. So the older maybes. Good. The people that said maybe and they're older. Isn't that an intersection? So the formula would be minus the probability of anybody that's both. Oh, shit and a half. <laughs> There's not enough room up here, Jeff. All right. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. All right. I really want that to make sense. If I count all the A's and all the B's, I better subtract any that were both. Just like we did here. That's the official formula for or. Did I have to know it before we did it? No, I didn't. Because I got everything I need for counting. This happens more often than just probability where the formula is harder than a specific situation. Why? 
because a formula has to work no matter what situation you're in. So there are certain situations that are easier than the formula makes it seem. It's just the way things are. All right, I like it, I like it. What happens if, all right, so let me ask you another question. What happens if I ask you, what's probably, I pick somebody who is, um, said yes, or they said maybe. Would it What's be? Different? Good. Would it be um, 17? No. Or no? No. Ooh. Oh, that's a good question. So they said yes, or maybe. Can you go at a diagonal? Now you're starting to look at this like it's um, connect four or something, but no, no, no. How many said yes? 11. No. Or, yeah, 14, 14, 14. Said yes. How many said maybe? Five. Are there any that said both? Could you say both? You could do it. No, Are you can't any? say both. Huh, sorry? No, you can't say both. No, good. So this would be, uh, where am I at? Yes would be 14 plus five maybes. And why do I not have to subtract anything off? Because nobody said both. Is it, it's still the same formula. It's just that that is zero. So when I have a situation where the two events don't overlap, oh shit, I can look at this as a Venn diagram. Jeff, calm down. So these are the ones that said yes, and these are the ones that said maybe. There's no overlap. Over here, well, the thing, well, here, these would be the A's, these are the B's, and there's some overlap. I have to subtract off the and. I have to subtract off that little sliver in the middle. Those are the ones that did both, right? So what is it called when I have, I'm not really asking you this. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the answer. What's it called when I have a situation where the events don't overlap? They are called mutually exclusive. Exclusive is like the club that doesn't let you in. Mutually exclusive is I have a club too, and I'm not letting anybody from the club into mine either. Nah, nah. Right? You don't have to wear a tie to come into my club, damn it. All right. Is everybody with me? I don't, I, I own one tie. I don't even know where it is. Okay. Maybe. So mutually exclusive is like, um, well, it used to be, I used to say cats and dogs, but there was a cartoon called uh, cat, was it cat dog? <laughs> Where the thing, I didn't even want to think about the biology of that thing, but um, so I stopped using that. So now I use something like salamanders and rocks. Can you be a salamander and a rock? No. No. Good. There's not that, that cartoon hasn't been made yet. Sounds like it would really be horrible, but oh, right. yeah. So that's the idea of mutually exclusive events. In that case, this will be zero because there's no overlap. It's the formula is still the same. It's just that this is zero. Okay. Um, one more thing I want to talk about with this situation. Um, I forget what number I'm on, but too bad. What's the probability that I pick somebody who's younger? Let's see if you guys get this. Given that they said yes. So the probability that somebody younger answered my question in the affirmative, right? So given that they said yes, what's the probability that they're younger? That's the correct way to parse that math sentence. What's different here? Do I know something about this person? You know that they're at least younger? Nope, we don't know that. Let's read this again. 
What's the probability that they are younger given that they said yes? Three. So you know they at least Hold on. are saying yes. Yes. So it's given that they said yes. So how many people am I talking about now? What's the total number of people I'm talking about? 14. All right. Let me, let me make sure everybody's with me. That's correct. Given that they said yes, who could I throw out? All those people. I'm focusing. I know this is true. They did say yes. So out of those 14 people, how many match what I'm looking for? Three. Three. I like it. That's where Nancy comes in. You're right, Nancy. Three. But it's out of 14. The one time that the bottom starts off different from the total is when I'm given information. Because then I can throw some people out, right? I'm like, I got a guy, I got a person. I don't know what they are. I got a person who said, yes, now I know it's one of these 14 people that you're talking about. So it's like your whole universe becomes this now. And that's all that exists. Okay, maybe. So the fundamental idea of probability does not change, but you see how you tweak the numbers given the situation. So in this situation, I'm only talking about 14 people now. That's why the bottom isn't 36 anymore, but it's still divided by the total it could be. All right, I feel like I'm talking extra amount today. I'm sorry. So here, you guys try this one. Don't say anything. I'll just call this one, why not? Probability, I get somebody uh, who said no, given that they're older. All right, don't say anything. All right, so let me catch up to you guys. What goes on the bottom? That's a good place to start. 17. Good. I know they're older, so I'm talking about 17 people. I can throw everybody else out. Out of those 17 people, how many said no? Two. Two. I like it. And I didn't, you know, you can make it into a percentage, make it into a percentage, blah, blah, blah. Right? The important thing is setting up the ratio for the probability. I like it. Okay, okay, okay. Now I wanna do a little bit more and then I have a worksheet that I've put up in Canvas for you to try to do. So we're gonna get away from the table here. I wanna talk about, well actually before we get away from the table, let me do this. I'm gonna erase the, Sure, I don't know, I need some room. Let me erase, I'm gonna erase this one. And you're all like, you're the teacher, just do whatever the shit, man. All right, I wanna develop a formula for this. So help me out. Where did 17 come from? Didn't it come from the given thing here, right? Didn't 17 come from older because we know, so given this, the bottom is going to be related to this. Is that you guys with me? Where did the 17 come from? It came from what I was given. So the bottom is the probability of the given. The bottom is always based on the given. Now, where the shit did that come from? Can somebody identify exactly what that two is? It's the number of older people who said no. So they're older and they said no. So the top will be the probability of one and the other one. Now, sometimes this picture helps. I'm sorry if this picture doesn't, but watch this. 
if I'm given that B happened, so something here happened, what's the probability that the thing that happened was also A? All right, this is weird. I don't know if this is going to help anybody, but somebody almost always gets helped by this. The only way that A could have happened if I know B did happen is if it's in here. Right? Could that A happen? If I know that B happened, could that A have happened at the same time? No. So the, if I know B happened, the only way that A could have also happened is if it's in here. So that's where the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. That's where that comes from. So I don't know if that visual helps at all or some of you guys, Venn diagrams give you nightmares. I don't know. Ah. All right, let me see. Uh, oh, that's right. I want to talk a little bit more talking <laughs> and then I'll unleash you. Um, all right. Let me, let me, I'm going to leave this up here, but let me do this. Um, Oh, let me, there we go. Okay. Um, I'm going to erase this actually. This has been up here for long enough. Okay. I'm going to leave this up here for now for, for a minute. Real quick. Oh, I'm sorry, Danielle. Um, I don't blame you. I don't know what kind of neighbors. Anyway, anyway uh, do you guys, how many times, this sucks that I have to ask this question, but do you guys know how many times the space shuttle has blown up? You're like, wow, Jeff. I know at least once. At least once is correct. Is it like seven times? Whoa, no, 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 no. no. It's twice. Oh, okay. So there's once back in, I'm pretty sure it was 86, and then there was once in 2000, I forget what year exactly, to be honest. I sort of didn't want to even allow it to be in my brain, but it just, it happened twice. Now, let me talk about the first time because Jeff lived in Florida, young Jeff, uh, total geek in Florida. I think it was maybe 84, I can't remember. Um, yeah. I was in Florida. So we would go out if I was home or if I was at school. I remember walking outside my house and going down the street and you could see the space shuttle take off from where we lived. So when, I, when we were in school, uh, we would sometimes go out, but for some reason this day we didn't. And when the announcement came over the loudspeaker, I remember I was in English class sitting in the first row because then I'm near the front door so I can get the hell out of there when class is over. I remember exactly. Um, anyway, enough of that. The space shuttle blew up that first time because of something called O-rings. Stay with me. You're not going to suddenly have to know aerodynamics and, and, and aeronautics and, and whatever, right? Just stay with me. Um, so there was a fuel line and the O-rings are basically valves to make sure that the gas goes in one direction. Would it be bad if the gas went the wrong way? Yeah, all right. Why would there be multiple valves? Why wouldn't they just put one valve? Why would they put multiple? Possible backups? Contingency plans, right? Backups. If you live in a really bad part of town, will you have just one lock on your door? No. Oh. Fact, you will have two doors at least, and there will be locks on both, right? And I know all too well, because I've lived in those areas uh, for sure. Uh, and why do you do that? Because, all right, thief you want in you're gonna have to you're gonna have to be able to pick multiple kinds of locks because i want to decrease the probability that you get in so let's just assume and this is not true but let's assume each o-ring has a one percent chance of failing i want to know what the probability of both of them failing so I'm going to call this uh, O-ring 1 and O-ring 2. What is the probability that O-1 and O-2 fail? What would suck is if I added them like I do with OR. 
If I add them, then that's dumb to put multiple O-rings, right? Because then it would be a 2% chance. If I just put one, it'd be one. So that can't be right. So what makes sense? What percent of the time would this guy fail? 1% of the time. What percent of the times that this one fails, would this one also fail? 1% of those times. So 1% of 1%. Does that make sense? This one will fail 1% of the times that this one also fails. What does that mean to do? What operation is this, of course? Multiplication. Multiplication. So, or, uh oh, I'm going to talk really slow, which is like, if you don't write this note down, you make no sense to me. Or basically means add and basically means multiply. Why do I say basically? Because we already saw that or is adding and then you got to subtract it a little, right? You have to adjust it a little bit in case you added something twice. So in this scenario, what would the overall probability of the thing blowing up be? 0.01 times 0.01. Right, so like a 0.01% chance. So what went wrong that day then? If they had multiple O-rings in place, why were they all cocky? Because they had had no, no, they had had no problems yet. But what was wrong that morning? It was frosty. It was cold. So the O-rings were more brittle. So the probability of failing went up. So that was the mistake that was made. We were just way too cocky. Same way we were before 9-11. Like that could never happen here. That could never blow up. Yeah, again, it just hasn't happened yet. You've been lucky. Okay, sorry. I don't want to make this into anything bigger than just a stats discussion. Sorry. Okay, maybe, maybe so. Now watch. All right, I'm going to erase this example up here. I want to keep this here. It's already got what they want from this. Probably more than you ever wanted. Okay, here it goes. Watch real quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna prove to you what I just said. Let me just rewrite this formula up here. How would I solve this equation for this? I want to get that by itself. So then I have a formula for that. What would I do to solve for this? What would I do to get this by itself? I'm going to get rid of that. What do I do to get rid of this thing? What's happening right now? It's, it's dividing, so you multiply it. Yes, yeah, so if I multiply both sides by peanut butter, Bam, bam. I'm gonna turn this around a little bit. Probability of and is based on multiplication. Jeff. <laughs> Give it. Oh, that's good, Jeff. Make sure you write that correctly. Don't do it. Probability of A and B equals probability of B times probability of A given B. You're all like, dude. All right, one last idea. We're gonna, we're actually, I wanna show you an example of this in action. That's not the space shuttle O-rings, right? Something a little more down to earth. So now watch this. Say I have a bag. Let's do the most basic probability example. The most boring one we can. So I have four red poker chips and six blue poker chips and five green poker chips, right? And let's say that I pick 
two of these. But now this is interesting. I really want you. I pick it in such a way that I pick one and then I drop it back in the bag. So this is going to be with replacement. So we're going to do an example of that without replacement in a minute. And it should make sense those two will be different because probabilities are based on counts. So if I take one and fed it to my little brother or threw it away, then the count changes, doesn't it? So right now, if I do it with replacement, what's the probability I get a red chip and then a green chip? So and means multiply. So I've got something and something else, something times something else. What's the probability that the first chip I pick is red? What is that, Jeff? I don't know. Ah. I reach in. What's probably get a red chip? Four of 15. Four out of 15. Kick ass, right? That's an easy question. 15 total possible chips, and four of them are red. I drop it back in. Plop. And then I reach back in without looking. What's probably I get a green chip now? Five out of 15. Five out of 15. And then you multiply those because it's an and. So it'll be the probability of this guy times the probability of that guy. So whatever the hell that is, it's about 9%, right? Yeah, it's, it's a little less than 9%. I'd say 8.91. I don't know. I'm making sorry. it. <laughs> Professor, what did you do right there? I'm sorry. So the probability of the first chip is red. Yes. It's four red mm -hmm. out of 15. Mm -hmm. I drop it back in. And means times. Mm -hmm. What's probably I get a green chip now, five mm -hmm. out of 15. So now somebody please just multiply those for me. I see we multiply across, okay. Yeah, so and means multiply. Anybody gonna help me out? Nobody? I'm, it's okay if I'm totally wrong with my guess. I'm cool with that. Can we multiply across? So what you put in your calculator is four divided by 15 times five divided by 15. That's Got what it. you put in your calculator. Calculator understands order operation. It'll do it all right. You don't have to know how to make fractions in there because fractions are just divisions. So that's all you need. So can somebody tell me, is it like 8.88? 8 8 8? 8. Oh, I'm close. Okay. 8.88 roughly. Okay. Now, Let's try one without replacement and then I can finally shut up, <laughs> right? Here we go. So from the, fa from the fame bag, from the same bag, what if I pick two without replacement? What's the probability I get a red and then a green? Now, Well, it's still two things. It's still times, but here's the difference. Let's probably get a red chip. It's still gonna be four out of 15, is that cool? But this time I throw that chip away. Right, pick that, I pick out, I'm like, I don't want a red chip and I throw it away. What's that gonna do to the probability the next one is green? What's gonna change? It's gonna lower the total the and increase number. the chance that it's a green. Yeah. The bottom number is going to change. There's still five greens, but now the bottom is going to be what? 14. Yeah, because I threw one away. So this is without replacement. This, I really want you guys to understand. Remember the formula for, uh, let me see. I really want to make this connection. God, this is a lot of talking today, dude. I know. Um, holy shit, what happened to you? Well, that was a that was a good investment. All right, Jeff, too bad. Um, 
the probability of A and B equals the probability of A. I know it was different earlier. It doesn't really matter what the letters are. The probability of one of them times the probability of the other given that this happened. <clears throat> if I picked a red first, what's the probability of green given that I picked a red? Now, now it's out of 14. It's changed. So what's that going to be? I don't have a clue. One third, uh, two sevenths. 0.095. Oh, man. All right. 0905? 0.095. 0.095. Okay. So 9.5%. Okay. So let me do this. Let me finally, 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 finally shut the hell up. I think today is the most I've talked. Okay. So, or I'm just tired. I think I'm just tired. Um, if you go to Canvas, there will be, amongst many other things, um, if you go to Unit 7, probability, probability where she, <laughs> that's what I want you to work on. And to be really honest, uh, you won't be able to do three and four yet. So I just want you to do one and two. One and two. Let's see what time is it. Okay, we got time still. And then we'll do this together in a minute. So everybody go to Canvas. I'm going to throw you in the breakout rooms in a little bit after you've worked on it for a while. We'll talk about the rest of this and then we'll call it a day. Right. By the way, before I forget... Um, I have a meeting tomorrow that starts at 11. I don't have to be there right at 11, but I am going to want to, but we'll see. I mean, if, if we're at the point where we desperately can't leave, then we have too many questions, then I might be very late to my meeting, but I'd rather not be. Where do you guys go? There you are. Let me see. I am the most absent-minded. It has nothing to do with my age. I've been absent-minded my whole life. So it's just going to get worse. Yay. My future classes, I feel bad for them. So, yes, I was not recording. We just did all this work up here. And that sucks. <laughs> but <laughs> there it is. Professor, can you repeat everything over again, please? No. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> I know. The one thing I will say is the only problem in this that has the bottom that's not 176 is the one where I'm given information. That's the only time I can throw people out and the bottom is different. That's the biggest mistake people make is they make the bottom different too soon. So the and, there's no reason the bottom is different because I don't know anything about the person, right? So number two, I want to start off with a simple, you know, just calculating individual probabilities. What's probably that we pick a Democrat out of this house? How many people are in the house? That's right, kids, 21. Okay, thanks for all the help. What's probably that I pick the person, they're a Democrat. Seven out of 21. 21. So that'll be 33.3, blah, blah, blah. Is that cool? What about what's probably the person is Republican? 12 over 21. 12 over 21. I like it. And then that's going to be, give me a minute, 5714. Is that what that is? Ah, oh, Jeff, you can't keep it in your head. Is it? No. Yes, 0.5714, is that right? That's scary. All right, I got some weird shit. Yes, right. yes. I know my divisions by seven and 14. Right. Yay, Jeff. Good shot, buddy. All right. 
Now I'm going to pick two people. So now I've got one person and another person. So I was thinking about like a hangman game. I'm going to make a little spot for everybody involved. And I'm doing it with replacement. So I take one person out. They say, oh, thank you. And then I push them back in. All right. And then I pick somebody else. <laughs> Just because we want to have some fun. So what's probably, I get an independent first. What's that? What's that probability by itself? An ind independent. Two over 21. Two over 21. Throw them back in the house. Ah! Why? And then what's probably, I then get a Republican if I pick somebody else. Twelve over twenty-one. Twelve over twenty-one. Good. Still over twenty-one because all twenty people are still in the house. And then you know whatever that is. Uh, let's see. One ten. So it's gonna be like five point six. I don't know. I'm trying to, but no one has helped me, so I'm trying to do it in my head. Five point four percent. Man, I suck. All right. So five point four percent. What about selecting two Democrats? So I still got one and then the next one, but they're both Democrats. So they're both gonna be seven out of 21. Is that cool? And that of course is 11.11% uh, .11 roughly, is that right? Huh. All right. Now we do the same, I love to do this. Do you see how these are the same questions? Part C and part E. I enjoy doing that, but now we're doing it without replacement. So now we actually let the person, so I pick an independent first that is still two out of 21, but now I let them leave. So now what's the probability I get a Republican next? Twelve over 20. Yes, so there's still 12 Republicans, but now there's only 20 people. So that will be 5.714%. That one's an easy one. Right? Is everybody? <clears throat> Could you just explain why you let, like what you, I'm just trying to make the connection between like letting one leave, like is it, so every time it's just going to be just one, like, or is right it, here, that has to do with it? How many people total am I picking? What does it say? Two. Two. So here's the first pick. And if I'm doing it without replacement, that means I'm not putting that pick back in. Up okay. here, this was with replacement. So I pick somebody and then I threw them back in. And that's why the bottom did not change. It still had 21 people. Now, I if, you're saying. Yeah, yeah, if I pick that guy and I let him leave, or girl, then there will be one less person in the house. Okay, I get what you're saying. Thank you. I like it. I like it. Now, F has got an extra little thing to it. So the first person is a Democrat, 7 out of 21, and I let that person leave. What's well, probably the next person I pick is a Democrat. over 20 yes one less democrat one less person why did both change this time because i the first one i picked was a democrat so of course i lost a democrat over here i didn't lose a republican did i it was an independent i picked that's why the top over here was still 12 do you guys see that it seems difficult but it isn't it's just counting that's all this is maybe 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 and let's see, what is that? Is that 10%? I'm pretty sure that's 10%. Yes. All right. 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 So let's do this a little. Well, let's see. All right. I, uh, I'm very tired. Let's see if we can make it through this. Um, I know I, I don't know if anybody worked on this yet, but do you see how 33% of Americans 
to be really honest, I got that wrong with screw it. We'll just go with what I've said here. Disliked, it's actually 33% liked, but oh well, too bad for everybody. Let's just go with that rope. 33% of Americans disliked the GOP's budget plan way back in 2018, the before times. We pick three Americans. So I'm going to have one, two, three spots. So in number two, I pick two people. Number three, I'm picking three people. What's the probability the first one disliked the plan? Because I want the first two to dislike it, right? So what's what do I put here? What's the probability that this one disliked the plan? Nothing major here. I tell you this answer directly. What's the probability any American disliked the plan? X. No, I tell you, I tell you what it is. 33%. Oh, 33%. 33%. Yeah, so I'm going to put a 0.33 there. You can do it, Jeff. Uh, crap, did he do that? Get out of there. Well, you look like a three, but you're going to leave. Okay. Three is my nemesis number. So that the probably the next one dislikes it is also 33%. What's probably that the third one likes it? What do you guys think? If 33% don't, what's the probability somebody does? Thirty-three percent dislike it. How many like it? What percent? Sixty-seven. Sixty-seven. That's all, right? The rest. The rest. And now you just throw this in the old calculator. You just multiply, multiply, multiply. What would that be? 0. 0.07 something? Does that sound right? Do you guys get this idea? So these aren't fractions that I have to keep track of. They just tell me the percent, so I can use that directly. 7.2 percent. 7.3, I like it. You're making this look very simple. All right, hopefully that extends to doing the work, right? So that's the hard part, right? It's always looks easy. You can sit there and agree with somebody doing the work. I understand. Um, what about part B? I want all three to dislike the plan. So it's the same kind of problem. I want all three to dislike it. So what's going to go into each spot this time? 0.33. Yeah, 0 0.33, 0 0.33, 0 0.33, 0.33. So you could do 0.33 to the third power, but you know, you could just do this. Uh, that one's going to be a little freakier. 3.3%. Is it 3.3? That's yeah, neat. That 0 0.03267. All right. Oh, I guess that makes sense, Jeff. You could have done that in your head. Well, let's see. Wait a minute. Should be one half of that. Is it 3.3? I got 3.6. Yeah. Well, I guess multiplying 0.33 three times isn't the answer. No, no, no. It is. Well, well, when I when I did to the third power, I got a different answer than putting point three three times point three three point times point three three. Unless I misput it in my calculator. Yeah. You did, you did, because those are the same exact thing. So there's something that went wrong when you put one of those in the calculator. So it's got to be three point six percent. Yeah, it actually comes out to be zero three five nine three seven. Now here comes the last freaky thing for the day. This isn't that freaky, really. We know this. We know this, by the way. You, you are ready for this. Okay. All right. Part C would be really hard to answer unless we do one little thing. Why would it be really hard to answer? What the hell? That looks very, very simple. But what does at least one likes the plan mean? That what does that mean? Percent didn't like no, 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 no. 
what does at least one liking the plan mean? It could be the first one or the second one or the third one, or it could be the first two or the last two or the first one and the last one, or it could be all three. You have to calculate all of those situations and add them up because I keep saying or, don't I? Or means add. I don't know if you guys are understanding. So at least one means one likes it, which could be the first guy or the second guy or the third guy. Or two like it, first two, last two, first one, last one, or all three. Like, do you want to do all that work? No, I don't want to do all that work either. Here's what's kick ass. What's the opposite of at least one likes the plan? Oh, this sounds familiar, doesn't it? What's the negation of that? What's the opposite of at least one likes the plan? No one. Sweet. So how do opposite probabilities relate? One is one minus the opposite. So if I do the probability that none like the plan, the probability that at least one likes it is one minus that. We know that. If the probability is going to rain today is 40%, the probability it won't rain is 60%. I barely have to think. The opposite of, in probability talk, the opposite is one minus the probability of the original. So I don't know if you guys are with me on that or not. So this would entail too much work. This is true for all probabilities. If the opposite probability requires less work, do that and then do one minus that. So do we already know this? What's the probability that none, none of them like the plan? Didn't we already do that? Anybody? Didn't we already figure that out? 3.6. Yeah, so one minus, and be careful, it's got to be yeah a decimal, but you got the idea. One minus 0.03, or you could do 100%, right? You can do percent minus percent, or you can do decimal minus decimal. So then I get 0.964, so about 96.4%. Whew, man, I'm tired. So let's do this. You guys try four out. <laughs> on your own. We'll talk about this tomorrow. I'm done. I am so tired. Um, so what's going to happen again, to remind you guys, tomorrow is we're done talking about new stuff. We will not talk about any new stuff. Tomorrow is going to be purely review for the final. You can come with questions from quizzes. You can come with questions from homework. Um, I will put together some kind of a, a, a practice final thing to work on tomorrow um, uh, in class together. Uh, okay. Anything, any questions about? Is that, would that be like a considered a study guide? Yes. Right. Um, you know, for the most part. Okay. Oh, All right, uh, professor, can you post this please, your notes? Oh yeah. I just yeah. I just prefer them in blue. Let me see. I'll save this. Thank you. Bam. All right. All right. All right, guys. Let me know if you need to hang out for a bit. Otherwise, you're free to go. Uh, I've got meetings, so I can't sleep. So <laughs> um, excuse me, Thank sir. You. I do have a question. Bye. All right, yes. Hello? Um, yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. So uh, th th this this doesn't have to do with the class. I, this is a separate um, thing. Um, oh yeah, so, you've got the thing about the uh, taking the final early, right? Is that what you're gonna? Yeah. Ask about? Okay. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I I yeah. So I don't know. I've got to very quickly consider what would work. Um, you can't take it because you're going to be out of town or something. Is that what it is? Yeah, I'm. I'm going to. I'm leaving to Texas this Thursday. 